All right. Welcome inside this beautiful little Porsche Cayman 981. It's a white Cayman 981 that I've been given the keys to, and I've decided to take the car on maybe just a little road trip, just to really see what the, the whole hype is about. Now, my previous experience in a 981 comes in the form of a Boxster GTS, which uh, some of the viewers may remember I did a video on last year. And I also had a 981 Cayman S courtesy car that was going back about four years ago. And for those who follow the channel will know that I previously owned a 987 Cayman S. So it'll be interesting to see how the two cars compare. I am holding a little secret about this car, in fact. And um, actually, when I say little, I mean big secret. So if you want to find out what that secret is, then please stick with me till the end of the video and I will reveal a little secret I've got about this here Cayman 981. So when I do these kind of road trips, I generally tend to head south. That's because I basically live in the north of England and everything is obviously below me. So on this occasion, I thought I'd come out and I'd go and head up north towards the border where England ends and Scotland starts. We we'll see some lovely, beautiful scenery up there, some lovely uh, twisty, winding roads and a good opportunity for me to get some drone shots and also some lovely shots for my Instagram channel. I will show you the car in greater detail once I find a nice location, but it's a 2013 Porsche Cayman S. It's finished in white, so it's a 3.4 litre engine which has 325 brake horsepower. Now, it is in white. Now, I think this car really, really pulls off the white really well, which is difficult for a lot of Porsches to do, but I think it really works on the Cayman 981. Um, there are two shades of white. I think one's like a Carrera white, which is like a 500 pound option, or there's a solid white, which is a free option. I, I suspect it's the latter of the two, but I'm not 100% sure which one it is. The car does have these 20 inch Carrera Classic alloy wheels, which I think suit this car absolutely beautifully. It doesn't have any launch control, but it does have the sports exhaust which is a must on these cars. And the problem with these country roads is that you do generally tend to get stuck behind livestock vehicles and other farm vehicles. I suppose I can't complain because we are in their domain. It also has a rear GTS splitter, which I think looks fantastic, and also a Techart front splitter. Again, I'll show you when I find a nice place to stop. The handling of this car, as you would expect, is just great. I can put my foot down into these twisty corners and it just sticks to the road like glue. It has near 50-50 weight distribution and the car is absolutely planted when I put my foot down. The steering is as sharp as a surgeon's scalpel and generally the cockpit area is very comfortable you get a nice driving position a nice sports lovely comfortable steering wheel and all together it just feels like a really nice sporty package it's very different to the 991 that i've had in fact this feels more of a sports car it feels compact and more like a sports car should be i don't really get that feeling with the 991 generation of the 911 Okay, so this seems like a nice place uh, to have a look at the car. We've got the sun in the background there, so you may not be getting the best shot of the car. Um, but this is the car, as I say, it's lovely, lovely and white. Um, it has the Carrera Classic alloys, the 20 inch Carrera Classic alloys, which I think probably could do with spaces on the back. I'd probably put 20 mil spaces on the back, maybe 10 to 15 on the front. And that would just sort of make them 
pull out just a little bit more, making just that little bit more uh, of a wider track and it makes it look aggressive. Uh, as we're coming around the back of the car, this is the GTS splitter that I was telling you about. Um, so it's a little bit more of an aggressive splitter. It seems to have these plastic parts which sort of come down here. And I think that really, really looks good and that does have the parking sensors built into the car. It does have lovely wide hips and obviously these black side intake grills look really, really good. And as we come around to the front of the car, this is where we see the tech art splitter. So it's the black front splitter there, which looks really, really good, really, really aggressive. But in my opinion, it doesn't match the lowness of the side sill here. So as you can see, this look, it makes it look like it's higher up. So what I would think is the best thing to do with this splitter is to paint this white. So this will be body color, all up here, body color, but leave this part black. And I think that would look really, really good on this car. Now I've got some pretty impressive facts about this area because I have been doing my homework. Surrounding the lake are over 150 million trees and it is the biggest man-made lake in the United Kingdom and holds over 200 billion litres of water and has 27 and a half miles of shoreline. There are many activities on offer here at Kielda from lodge holidays, camping, water sports, boat rides, wildlife conservation areas and an observatory from where you can actually see the Milky Way. It was officially opened in 1982, meaning that 40 years ago, this area simply didn't exist. And one of the reasons this is such a perfect road trip car is because of the amount of storage space it has. Obviously it's a mid-engine car, so not only do you get storage in the front of the car and quite a deep storage space as well, but it's a misconception that the engine is right here in these cars. In the Cayman, it's obviously mid-engine, so as you can see, you get a lot of uh, storage in there. Whoops, Daisy, moving on. All right, sport button on, as is always the case when I get inside this Cayman 981. Uh, the 981 was the last of the non-GT naturally aspirated Caymans. Although I do think that the 718 is a good car, it obviously has the turbocharged engines. And I just think the styling of the, of the 718 is a little bit more tame compared to the little bit more aggressive styling of the 981. So we're leaving that area behind us now. Uh, and a few miles up the road, we've got the border between England and Scotland. So it'll be interesting to see what greets us up at that part of the reservoir. And I'm going to enjoy more of this Cayman 981 and those phenomenal engine sounds. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> so at the start of the video, I did promise you a little secret about this car. And well, we're finally at that moment. So a few weeks ago, um, I actually went to look at this car and I did actually buy this car. So this car, this Cayman 981S is officially mine, which honestly, I'm super, super thrilled about. I absolutely love this car. I wouldn't say that I've actually been looking for a car like this for a great deal of time, but as I loved my previous generation, my 987 Cayman S, I seen this car come up and yeah, I went and bought it. It's not GT4 spec or anything like that, but what you've got to remember is that I didn't pay anywhere near GT4 money for this car. And I've been driving this car for the past few weeks now and I can honestly say that I really, really love it. I found this car when I wasn't really looking for, for one of them. So with that in mind, I think that's probably why I like it so much because there was no hype, no deliberation, no build up. I just seen the car, I did my checks and I went out and bought it. And for that, I feel like I have to give myself a high five. And if you know me already, the answer is yes. I am already planning modifications on this car. Um, nothing major, nothing drastic, but I'll be sorting out the spacing on the wheels as I mentioned earlier. Potentially a set of Recaro bucket seats in here. Um, I'll be doing the paintwork on the Tech Art splitter. Possibly a steering wheel retrim, some exterior decals. 
This car doesn't unfortunately have the sat nav system in, so I may well be putting a CarPlay system in as well. And I also do plan to track this car a bit. Obviously it's not a track dedicated car because I just don't have time uh, for a track dedicated car, but this car will be a perfect go between something I can use for the track and daily on the roads as well. Okay, so we're just heading into the border now. The border is right beyond this tree line here. So I can see the Scottish borders sign there. There's a sign behind us saying uh, this is England. So we are now in Scotland now. We've now gone from Scotland or England to Scotland. And yeah, pretty, I wasn't really expecting much. I wasn't really expecting a lot at all. And uh, in all honesty, we didn't get anything. Um, that just shows you what the border is like, I suppose. But it's still nice to get these drone shots of the car going through the trees. Really, really like that. I've obviously had to get it quite high up because the last thing I wanted to do was the drone to hit the trees. And I think we've succeeded. So for the rest of the afternoon, I think I'll be trying to find somewhere for a nice cup of tea. I've not had anything to eat. I've not had anything to drink so far today. And it's, uh, it's half past three in the afternoon. So. Uh, that will be my little mission. Um, really want to thank you for sticking around, sticking around to watch this video. I'll be doing lots more video on this Porsche Cayman because obviously now I own it. It's part of the channel, so there'll be a lot more scope for me doing videos on this particular car. Um, yeah, so thanks again. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram, tpn.tv. Please also subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Keep the faith. I'm slowly fading through the smoke I can't hear my